the north and never give it back. So that's a good pick. You get the corner. I gotta go bold. Right? I gotta go bold for this. Oh yeah. She's got some nice long Welcome hair, back to the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Barron. And if you're out there on YouTube, make sure to drop a like, subscribe. It helps out the show tremendously. Hit the notification bell so you know when we're gonna release a new show. And also download the podcast everywhere that you get your podcast. Just search for Unbearable bearable sports what's going on everybody hope you had a fantastic weekend today we're going to be breaking down what happened throughout veteran mini camp that we had last week and then this week we're going to be talking a little bit more about rookie training camp 2.0 so we'll be talking all the good things all the bad things that happened last week as well to keep you informed but first there's some semi-breaking news right before I am going on to record this show that the Bears are, it sounds like, according to Jay Glazer, that it sounds like the Bears are going to be signing Mercedes Lewis again, re-signing him back to the team. And let me know what you think down below in the comments if you're watching. But for me, I like it. We've said, I we talked about this a little bit when we were talking about who to re-sign, who not to re-sign. Mercedes Lewis is just a solid tight end a good tight end and even though he's 40 years old the guy is a veteran the guy knows how to block and to me I'm fine with him being in this locker room especially since it seems like he's just a pros pro out there and also this kind of speaks volumes about Stefan Carlson I've been hearing that he's been dropping passes when given opportunities because Cole Komet's been a little bit banged up so far it doesn't sound like anything we should be worried about but it sounds like as soon as Komet goes down, we've talked about the depth at the tight end position. There really wasn't any of that. That's why I was always saying we need a third tight end. We need someone because we like to roll out with two tight end sets. I think that Lewis is a perfect person to just bring in someone that's a vet, someone that's well-respected, that can come back in and is not fighting for anything. He's just going to play his role and still was a solid player for us last season. So. Overall, he's not officially signed, but he's visiting Hallis Hall, and all expectations are that he will sign with the Chicago Bears. But also, watch out for defensive ends this week, just because we know that the Bears like to sign people right after main mini camp after they see, okay, here's what we have at defensive line. Um, Jeremy Fowler last week also reported he expects the Bears to sign a defensive end, so something to definitely watch out for this week week. So let's get into what actually went down. And the main topic that we have to talk about is Caleb Williams, because we all know that there was the one, uh, one mini camp, one OTAs that he didn't look so hot. And then the next one, he looked great. So then there was three consecutive days that the bears, Chicago, the Chicago bears media was able to watch Caleb Williams. And overall, just from me listening, reading reports, what I'm hearing, Caleb Williams is looking the part. Right, And I'm not here to start cashing in MVP votes for him at any time soon, but he just simply looks the part. And Waddle and Sylvie on ESPN 1000, they were talking about him and they were just kind of discuss. like a lot of people were asking, well, what does Caleb Williams look like? How does he compare to everyone else? And they were talking about Caleb Williams doesn't look like a rookie, looks the part and um, does throws that Justin Fields would never do. Just simply looks the the part. And that's the big thing because what, what I remember seeing when Justin Fields was a rookie, I remember going to training camp and watching him and Andy Dalton throwing against each other. It was a competition. And I remember going there going, Oh man, Justin Fields is going to light it up. And Justin didn't look the part yet again, his rookie season, but it's good to hear people that, you know, Waddle was in the NFL. And people that were in the NFL watching him play say, okay, this guy just has it. Uh, Josh Rock from NBC Sports Chicago was discussing something about how he floated a ball. Caleb Williams floats a ball down the middle right to DJ Moore for like 20 or 30 yards. And the thing that we keep hearing about Caleb Williams is the touch that he puts on the ball, which to some people, it's like, yeah, just I do that in Madden. I tap the button hard or I tap the button soft, right? But that is such a difficult skill for a quarterback to do and that our rookie is able to do this 
it's just phenomenal. And like when Josh Rock was talking about that play, they're like other quarterbacks would just try and bullet it in. Caleb understands, okay, I have different pitches. I have different velocities that I can put on this ball to get it into the spot that we need. And that's what makes Caleb Williams so so diff- difficult to defend. And also, more and more people are just talking about Caleb Williams is just very well prepared. Now, Caleb did talk about in his interview that something he needs to improve on is the snap cadence, the snap count. And for anyone that's wondering, why is it so difficult to get a snap count down? What the Bears are hoping to do, Matt Eberflus answered questions on this, but they're hoping to do is use the snap count as a weapon. Because if you just go out there, and we've seen this with our quarterbacks where you have the person that slaps the side of the, uh, the guard and then they just snap it. If you have a tricky snap count, you can get people off sides. Like we know, Caleb Williams idolized Aaron Rodgers growing up. Aaron Rodgers, as we know as Bears fans, was the king of difficult snap counts that the Bears could not predict, and he caused us to go off sides all the time. It's great to see that Caleb Williams is really, really trying to just hone that in and learn more and more and more. It's nothing to be concerned about, but... I'm just excited that he's trying to learn that. And then with this offense, they're just trying to make it to that next level. But yet again, everyone needs to be on the same page. Everyone needs to be good. But so far, all reports out of training camp with Caleb Williams or mini camp with Caleb Williams is that he looks apart. He looks good. He looks solid. So you know what? We can we can be excited for next week as well. And then after next week, then there's going to be a long lull until training camp so but we'll get into the next piece because I want to talk about who was the most impressive so far and who's been someone that maybe isn't getting as much love yet again I was not there to physically watch even though I wish I could but hearing what everyone is reporting and hearing what everyone's talking about whenever someone brings up Roma Dunze they just go man is he good Yet again, I hear this on ESPN 1000. I hear this on CHGO. hear this on NBC Sports Chicago. hear this on all the big Chicago outlets. You listen to them and you hear them talk about Roma Dunze. And this is what we said when Roma Dunze was drafted. This is someone that a lot of people considered blue chip. I was kind of teetering on that level. But this is someone who would be the number one wide receiver in most draft classes. And we get him with the number nine pick. And that's when when people were looking at him, they're like, this guy's big. Keenan Allen is a big wide receiver. And people that were reporting were like, listen, Roma Dunze is bigger. Roma Dunze is taller. Roma Dunze is faster. Roma Dunze is stronger. But it's not just his physical size. It's that Caleb Williams and him have already started developing some chemistry. Now, I've also heard, too, that DJ Moore and Roma Dunes, they have more chemistry um, or just have been getting more balls than Keenan Allen. Allen's just not really been there, and it's really not like a, a big red flag. It's just they've been with Caleb Williams the most. And also, when you have this many weapons, one is going to get more catches, more reps than the others. There's just so many good mouths to feed. So that's where I just want to bring this up because Roma Dunze hasn't gotten enough love. Roma Dunze has been good. He's been someone that has impressed, like, this guy can just flat out move. This guy works well when someone is draped on him. He's able to position his body like we saw in college and still be able to come down with the football. It's a very good, reliable target. Just great things coming out of camp that right now, Roma Tunze looks as advertising. People just kind of overlook him because everyone's like, what's going on with Caleb? What's going on with Caleb, right? But overall... Number one and the number nine pick looking pretty darn good out there at minicamp. But let's talk about something else that was going on. Matt Eberflus, the house of Flus. Flus brought over a bunch of different veterans. And I don't know if you all heard this interview. Like Matt Eberflus basically had a bunch of people over, a bunch of the players over um, based on your years. And then you're playing yard games. They had all like food trucks, all sorts of things over there. And it just was cool because you just hear, like, I heard Zach Pickens talk about this, where there's just this different vibe. And it's just inside the locker room, not just because of Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams helps, but also Matt Eberflus. You hear him at the press conferences. 
he seems confident. And one of my friends who always dressed to the nines, always dressed top line, like always nice hair, nice outfits, everything. He'd always tell me, he's like, Brad, you know, 80% of, uh, 80% of confidence is looking good. And he's like, you know, you got to look good so that you feel good, right? That's what you got to do. And Matt Eberflus has accepted my friend Ben's uh, advice, I guess, because you see Matt Eberflus looking good. He's feeling good. He's talking more confident. In the interviews, you would always hear him kind of shy away from different different questions. But he seems confident. He's firing back. He's he's talking with confidence, and that oozes throughout the locker room, throughout the team. And it's just good vibes all around. But it's also cool that Matt Eberflus has people over. And something, too, Zach Pickens said this as well. Caleb Williams absolutely smoked Zach Pickens. And I don't know who his partner was. It was kind of hard to hear. In a game of bags, 21 to nothing. It's just it's just crazy to hear that. But Caleb Williams, you hear more stories of him and just his overall competitive nature. Where Caleb Williams was even out at X Golf and he wasn't winning. So he's like, come on, let's keep playing. Let's keep playing with Cole Komet and then um other people, other bears. But just cool stuff about the Chicago Bears. But let's just keep on going because now let's talk a little bit down we, we're going to drop drop the vibes a little bit and then we're going to go back up with what's happening so let's talk about this offensive line shakeup because this is probably the biggest negative storyline that's coming out of mini camp if you will just kind of causing some concern like is this a concern let me know let me know in the comments are you concerned about this offensive line and for those that don't know so first off Karan Amagaji We know that he was injured and he's still just sidelined. Braxton Jones, little tweaked. It doesn't seem like anything major, but just hasn't been out there. So what we saw was more of a Larry Borum out there instead of um, Larry Borum out there instead of Braxton Jones since Braxton Jones was banged up. But then also, we know this, Tevin Jenkins and also Nate Davis. Nate Davis was able to play one day, but then back to tending to injuries and other things like that. And we talked about this last time we talked about minicamp, that this guard position is something to look out for. And that's why I'm looking at Ryan Bates because all indications from people in the know say that Ryan, they want Ryan Bates to be the center. That's why he was brought in. That's why Ryan Poles loves him so much, even though he's always been a guard. And yes, he's played a good handful of snaps at center, it's still not necessarily his true position, if you if you will, right? He was a tackle in college, moved to guard, and really has played all over the offensive line. So what we saw was we did see Coleman Shelton at center, Ryan Bates at right guard, and yet again, it seems like the Bears might want Ryan Bates to be more that center, but overall, when you hear about our guards just injury concerns, it really feels like, to me, I think that the best move moving forward would be trying to have that veteran Coleman Shelton, even though Coleman Shelton is a a middling center at that. I'd rather have the Coleman Shelton, the veteran center that can help with the rookie quarterback, and then Bates making sure that he can fill in anywhere that he needs to be. Because I think that truly, someone is going to be down. Someone is going to be banked up. That's just the way that the NFL works. And I think if you can slot Ryan Bates to those positions, That would be phenomenal. Also, Matt Pryor has been getting some reps at right guard. Yet again, someone that doesn't excite me that he's getting reps. Um, But yeah, he's not going to be like a starter. He might be more competing against Jatiree Carter to make the squad as a backup interior offensive lineman. Um, Also, Pryor can play tackle. He played with the second team offensive line for at right tackle. He also played some right guard. So really just kind of all over the place with that. But there's also another piece about the offensive line that was really interesting. Tevin Jenkins was asked directly about his contract. And Tevin Jenkins, someone that we all love, answered it pretty much point blank. It sounds like his camp reached out to the Chicago Bears to say, hey, let's get this underway. And he said it seems the Bears kind of turned it down. We're like, eh, no. And just kind of shoot it away a little bit. So are you nervous? Is that the right thing to do? Because... Tevin Jenkins, we all know, is phenomenal. But also, he's been banged up. 
I would love to see him as a Chicago Bear because he reminds me so much of Kyle Long. Not necessarily his body type or other things like that, just more so this is the injury-prone guy that just oozes, oozes Chicago Bears. Like, he is a Chicago Bear through and through. He embodies the city. He's just a fun guy, just a real, just a guy that you want to root for and that the city loves, the fans love, and I'd love to see him as a Chicago Bear long term. But it's that contract situation, and it sounds like, hey, we're just going to see. And if I'm the Bears, I think what they're trying to do is, first off, they might be trying to re-sign someone else. They might be trying to look other places because they like to focus on one contract at a time. But still, why would you kind of shoo away his people? The only thing I could think of is maybe you go, okay, Tevin, show us that you're healthy this year. Kind of like with Jalen Johnson. Like, listen. Jalen Johnson has, was banged up every year. And we said this last year, he's probably going to get injured. And he really, I mean, eventually he was banged up. So I guess he wasn't fully healthy, but you saw a fully healthy season with him for majority of the season. And he was one of the best corners in the league and the Bears paid him as such. So I think for Tevin, it does make sense to say, listen, put together a great season and we'll bring it back. Just show us what you can do on tape. Show us what you can do. I think that might be what the Bears are trying to do with Tevin Jenkins if they do kind of go, nope, don't want to to talk to you yet, Tevin. Don't want to talk to you yet. We'll talk about it it close to a year from now, and then we'll discuss your contract situation. That's my vibe. That's kind of my feeling with it. Would I love to see him as a Bear? Yes, for the right price, as always, right? It is an interior guard spot that is often injured. That's the only concern. But now, let's get down to the last couple little bits of of training camp so far the true weapon the 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 hype is high for tory taylor ladies and gentlemen the punter from down under the crocodile punter as we love to call him tory taylor people are like this guy's just so good and anytime that someone talks about it they're like this guy is such such a weapon and is he going to be out there for like the kickoffs because the new kickoff rules and other things like that i don't think so because you are kind of kicking it from a tee. It is more of a kicking motion rather than punting. Think about it. Punting, you're hitting it in the air. Kickers, you're positioning it and then kicking it off that way. So I still don't think he's going to be on the kickoffs yet or kickoffs really, but still from the punting perspective, it's awesome to hear that our investment in the punting position, you'd rather see this. You'd rather see this trick shots. He was pinning the ball down in the five-yard line multiple times, as reported by Nicholas Moriano from CHGO. Just overall, Torrey Taylor looking the part and just hyping some people up about some punter competition. But now what's next? This week is kind of rookie camp 2.0. This is a very unique situation that the Bears are putting themselves in. Normally, this is when everyone kind of says, okay, we're good. See you later. They're done. But the Bears go, wait a second, rookies, you got to come back. And quite frankly, I'm kind of fine with this. Even though that there's that rookie wall you have to be concerned about, I like it from the perspective of Caleb Williams, getting that snap count down a little bit more, trying to kind of figure out, okay, how can I, like, what is the playbook? The more reps that Caleb can take, the better. Just as simple as that. So, Rookie training camp coming out there uh, this week as well. So we'll definitely have you covered. So if you're watching, make sure to like and subscribe so you do not miss another show. And the last little bit that I do want to talk about, a little Javon Dexter and um, Booker discussion. So Javon, as we previously reported, looks slimmer, looks a little bit quicker. But Montez Sweat was actually asked about the the defensive line. And something that was nice is he... He talked about Austin Booker a little bit, just talking about his quickness, and more people have talked about Austin Booker and his his quickness, his agility, his ability to kind of get in the backfield, which is nice that people at least can see that he's able to do that. And that's where he is most likely going to be a situational pass rusher, not an every-down type of a guy. Maybe next year he can develop into that, but yet again, developmental guy. But Javon Dexter, Monta Sweat, said something along the lines of the guy just needs to put it together. The guy just needs to go. The guy just needs to do it. And it's, it's a different, it it was a little odd to me to kind of hear him say something like that, but 
it really does just kind of summarize Javon Dexter. He just needs to go. Just just do it, right? Just You have the strength of a thousand men. Like Just <laughs> plow people over, learn how to use your hands, and that's why Javon Dexter has super high expectations at that three technique. But yet again, we'll see what the Bears ultimately end up doing this week because are they going to go out, get a Calais Campbell? Are they going to go out and kind of do the not sexy pick and just kind of bring back Yannick Ngakwe? We'll see what the Bears will do, but don't worry. We'll have you covered. So make sure to like, subscribe out there on YouTube, rate the show five stars everywhere you get your podcast. And with that, on Bearable Sports Podcast, we are out. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and you notice know she's a brand